Super Bowl Sunday is mere days away between two of the NFL's best from the AFC and the NFC, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. History will be made in this game as Tom Brady gets to host the Super Bowl for the first time as a representative of the National Football Conference and he gets to host that Super Bowl at his own home stadium down in Tampa, Florida. The Buccaneers are hosting the Kansas City Chiefs in Tampa Bay at the Pirate Ship at Raymond James Stadium. For the first time in NFL history, a player will be visiting his 10th Super Bowl and searching for his 7th win. On the other side of the field, the young gun, Patrick Mahomes, searches to take the torch from Tom Brady, not by having it passed to him, but by taking it from his hands. The Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are set to kick this game off on Sunday, February 7th at 6.30 p.m. on CBS and ESPN Deportes. So, it's finally time. After a absolutely wild NFC Championship game, and at this point, from what we know from the Chiefs, a pretty paint-by-numbers AFC Championship game, we're here. Kansas City knocked off Buffalo. Buffalo got out to a nine-point lead, and that was the end for them. I, they, they took their foot off the gas way too early, and Patrick Mahomes did what Patrick Mahomes does. Tampa Bay, on the other hand, they got bailed out big time. Their, uh, their franchise guy threw a lot of picks. Tom Brady got got picked off three times, and they still managed to get bailed out by some questionable calls there at the end. Got a feel for Aaron Rodgers. But we're here. We're going to Tampa Bay for Tampa Bay hosting the Super Bowl, which has never happened before. Uh, very interesting. I personally wish it would have happened a few years ago when the Super Bowl was in MetLife Stadium and the Giants, you know, I'm a Giants fan. It is what it is. But let's kind of start breaking this game down. we got a tail of the tape. Kansas City, they have the first offense in the National Football League, the 16th defense, and the 16th rushing offense. Tampa Bay, on the other hand, a little bit more balance, 7th offense, 6th defense. But here's the kicker, the 28th ranked rushing offense. That is going to be a big key for me in this game, is which team can establish the run. Obviously, we know both these quarterbacks can do what they do at a big-time level. But both of these quarterbacks also are going to need a solid run game to fall back on in this game. I think that's what this game is going to end up being. It's going to be a little bit of a punch-you-in-the-mouth kind of game to start. And the running backs are going to need to get some, some workload in. And when these two teams played on November 29th, back in Week 12, in Tampa Bay, coincidentally... Uh, so on the same field as this game is going to be happening, the Chiefs running backs, or the Chiefs rushers of the football, I should say, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Patrick Mahomes, Le'Veon Bell, totaled for 87 yards together, no touchdowns. While on the other side, Ronald Jones went nine carries for 66 yards and no touchdowns. So the key to this game for the winner, I believe, will be who can establish the running game first. So basically, whoever owns the coin toss, whoever elects to receive, they have the ball in their court to, to establish that this game is going to be a physical running game, one in the trenches. And I, for some reason, find myself having a hard time believing that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers want to do that. They've got Godwin. They've got A.B. They've got Evans. They've got Gronk. They've got Godwin. They've got Brady. And some part of me thinks that Bruce Arians is sitting in the meetings all week, playing in his first Super Bowl as a head coach, I believe anyway, uh, with these grand schemes of these elaborate plays that are going to win and dazzle. I, I think that this moment is going to be a little bit too large for Bruce Arians. I don't think that the, the, this magnitude of this game can be understated for a coach like... Uh, Bruce Arians, who has been around for so long and is finally getting his opportunity. And all these stars seem to be aligning. He's got the most loaded team in the history of teams. He's playing on his own home field. It just seems like a whole lot to comprehend for a first time in the Super Bowl. Tampa Bay hasn't been here since 2003. Uh, it's it's going to take a lot. 
honestly. And when you look on the other side of the ball, for Kansas City, we know what they are. They're Patrick Mahomes beating you down the field vertically, but they always seem to be able to run the ball at will whenever they need to. And that is a big key for why they've been so successful under the Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid era over the past three years is they've been able to open up these big plays with the success on the ground. That, to me, is such an understated part of their game because obviously everybody likes looking at the big plays on the highlight reels, but you never pay attention to Edward Zolaire, to Le'Veon Bell, to in the past Kareem Hunt, uh, Damian Williams, all these guys who would be physical running the ball and, and they'd punch you in the mouth and move, move the pile. And eventually, when your offensive line is winning in the trench, that D-line don't want to respond no more come third, fourth quarter. Speaking of lines in this game, Kansas City's got a big, big, big advantage over Tampa Bay because they know what to expect out of Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. He's been nine other times. You've got nine Super Bowls of this guy to watch. And to me, there are only two. Well, there are three that you need to pay attention to. 2007, 2011, and 2018. Watch the Giants' defensive line in 42 and 46 and what they were able to do mixing up their different looks on defense, bringing different guys, switching it up on third down, getting to Tom Brady in unique ways. And then in, against Philadelphia, that game was won on a strip sack. Yeah, it was a shootout. But the, D, the Eagles' defensive line won that game. No matter what you want to say about it, that's just the fact of the matter. Tom Brady, 99 times out of 100, drives that ball down the field, wins that game. But Brandon Graham made the play of the year for that team. And that's what it's going to be for Kansas City. They need a big play defensively. When they played on November 29th, they picked Tom Brady off twice. Am I going to say that's going to happen again? Absolutely. Why? Because Tom Brady, in these here playoffs, as he is throughout, throughout his entire career, just track it statistically, in the playoffs, Tom Brady's production falls dramatically from what it was in the regular season. We look two weeks ago to the NFC Championship game. Tom Brady throws three picks. In this game, I think he's going to throw two. I think he's going to go uh, throw two interceptions to two touchdowns in the Super Bowl. Neither of these defenses are really spectacular. The Tampa Bay defense is obviously better than the Kansas City defense. And that has to do with the, the linebackers and, and the interior defensive line for Tampa Bay. But give me the Eagle, or uh, excuse me, give me the Chiefs secondary. I like them better in this game than I like Tampa Bay's secondary. I just, I, I really enjoy what I see from Kansas City on both sides of the ball week in, week out. They look like a complete team. Tampa Bay, even up until the NFC Championship game, still looks like a team that doesn't know what they're going to be. It's, it's bizarre to me. I don't really understand what their identity is. Are they going to be a vertical threat? Are they going to turn and hand the ball to Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette 40 times a game? They don't have an identity. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But in a big game like the Super Bowl, you need one. They showed it in the NFC Championship game. They don't know who they are. They're having trouble out of the gate. Yeah, they, I mean, they score on their opening possession, but they come out, they look a little discombobulated in the, in the second half. They're shut out in the second half. Aside from a field goal, they only score three, and they still manage to win that game. Those halftime adjustments that were made by Green Bay nearly won them the game. And Andy Reid is, in my honest opinion, the best coach currently in the sport. Even better than Bill Belichick. Currently, as of today, what you've done for me lately gives me Andy Reid. And Andy Reid is perfectly capable of maximizing on these opportunities and making these proper defensive adjustments at halftime. And Tom Brady is a guy where it's very, very simple how to beat him. Obviously, it's easier said than done, but you generate pressure. You get guys in his face, you hit him. Tom Brady does not like to be hit. 
So the more you hit him, the more flustered he's going to become. The more he's going to want to try to push the ball down the field. And the more chances your defense is going to have to make big plays. You got to get a Brandon Graham type strip sack. You got to get an interception. You got to do what the Giants did and just give him hell for four quarters because no matter what, we saw it in Atlanta or against Atlanta in the Super Bowl. You can do whatever you want to this guy, but he's still Tom Brady. And that, to me, is the scary prospect for, for Kansas City. Um, and, and sure, we've got Patrick Mahomes. He's got all these impressive comebacks in the postseason. But that 28-3 to in the Super Bowl is legendary. And whatever Patrick Mahomes has done until this point, this is, to me, his defining moment as an NFL quarterback. If he goes out and he wins this thing straight up, if he scores 40 points, it is boom over. Best player in the league, hands down. But they need a complete game. They need to play better than they did in Week 12. Beating Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 27-24 to ain't going to cut it this time. Well, obviously it will because that will win you the game. But you know what I mean. You want to win this game emphatically. Beat the Buccaneers because they, frankly, shouldn't even be on the field. They don't deserve to be there. Kansas City Chiefs are so good. Just at, at, at everything. And I don't even know how to quantify this and, and give you something to, to wrap your head around, but they're so impressive at what they do. It's frightening. Like when they had to bring Chad Henney in against Cleveland and Andy Reid puts the ball in his hand and tells him win the game, and he does, that's the mark of a great team. And then Tampa Bay, on the other hand, in, in the first two games they played against New Orleans, they looked like... They didn't even know how to play football. And yeah, they come out and they beat them in the postseason. But Drew Brees is washed, and he's a notorious playoff choker. Whatever. They barely squeak by the Washington football team with a fourth string, maybe even fifth string quarterback. And then they get lucky against Green Bay with some questionable calls. And only scoring three points and a half. And now they're here. And I love the national media. It's what I watch in my free time. But they've got it all wrong. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are woefully, woefully outmatched. This game would be won by Jameis Winston. Mark my words. There's no way to prove that. But if I can put my name on anything that you can go and bet on in an alternate universe, it would be that if this game by Tampa Bay was quarterbacked by Jameis Winston, he would win. That's just what I that's just what I believe. I don't think Tom Brady's got it anymore. Kansas City's too overwhelming. And for Kansas City in this game, they need to get off the field on third down. That's that's a big that's a big, big, big thing when you're playing Tom Brady is he loves third down. It's probably uh, the most successful down for Tom Brady in any of his offenses. Against uh, Green Bay last week, it felt like every single time they were in a third down situation they converted it's it's incredibly incredibly uh impressive um so so that's a big thing for them they need to get off the field on third down i mean if if, if even you can do that half the time then i think you're putting you're putting yourself in a better chance to win uh that then otherwise you would have and they also need to take their shots. Obviously, Andy Reid isn't afraid of this. But you never know, when you're in that moment, what your play calling is going to be. Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, they need to be loose. They need to be relaxed. They need to call their shot early. Because in that game on November 29th, Tyree Kill had 13 catches for 269 yards and three touchdowns. That is insane. So it'll be very, very easy to take your shot. They just have to remember to do it. I don't think that that's going to be a problem for Kansas City. 
but they need to. It's a big key. They need to hit these these big plays early to get the Tampa Bay defense reeling because then you can start opening up the running game later in the game when you've already established your deep threat and you can win just like that. It's so easy when I say it, right? And for Tampa Bay, they need to obviously limit Patrick Mahomes out of the pocket. He's just, he's a killer from outside the tackle box. But what he can do with shovel passes and side arms and no looks, he's just probably the hardest quarterback to defense in the league. And Tampa Bay, they need badly to contain him when he starts to roll out. Because that will beat them single-handedly if Patrick Mahomes is allowed to extend plays. So that that's big for, for Tampa Bay. Uh, Tom Brady, I believe, needs to use all of his weapons equally and often. So none of this going to one guy 11, 12, 13 times. Hit everybody equally. What they need to do on offense is get guys subbed out regularly get Scotty Miller in there get Antonio Brown in there get some of the relief guys some more reps in this game so that way in the big moments Godwin's healthy and, and, and refreshed and Evans is healthy and fresh and Gronk's healthy and fresh but to me it's still very important that they get everybody involved equally it's going to be a big key when Brady has a wide arsenal to work with, we know what he can do. Just look at 2007, look at 2011. Some of the most impressive years ever quarterbacked, and, and he had a lot of weapons. Uh, and my final key for Tampa Bay, don't fall behind. If Kansas City wins the opening coin toss and they go down and score, you better start counting your chickens before they hatch because any lead against either of these quarterbacks isn't safe, but especially get, uh, with, with Kansas City. The way that they're able to suffocate offensively, uh, it's, to me, it's insane. <laughs> and, and Tampa Bay, they can't fall behind at all, or else they are in big, big trouble. So if I had to give you final prediction, going back to November 29th, when Kansas City won 27-24, I'm not going to give you a score prediction, but I'll give you a prediction. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs going back to back winning their second Super Bowl in as many years I just don't think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are as well coached or as well disciplined and obviously it's in any given Sunday league it's not a the Super Bowl isn't a best of seven it's a best of one so you better put your big boy pants on go out there and play and uh, Kansas City I think that they're mentally tough I think that they're a lot mentally tougher than, than Tampa Bay uh, I just go back to that clip of Mike Evans on the field on the NFC Championship game. Like, wow, I'm really in the NFC Championship game. It's like, yeah, get your head in the game. <laughs> we know where you are. We know you're going to the Super Bowl. Get your head right. Get it screwed on tight. You're going to need it. You're going to need that mental faculty to be absolutely sharp against the, the Kansas City Chiefs because they're not going to go easy. They're not going to show you everything they showed in the regular season. They're not going to show you anything they showed on November 29th. So, I am looking forward to this game so much. It's uh, The anticipation is is festering, and I just want it to be over with already. <laughs> I, uh, I'm ready. Let's just let's put it that way. So, that's going to do it for the Super Bowl picks. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the game. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Enjoy it with your friends, your family, socially distance, whatever you want to do. Just enjoy the Super Bowl, dang it. And I will catch you all week one next year.